the world's great novel. Tonight, the NBC University of the Air presents the first of four episodes in its dramatization of Fyodor Dostoevsky's greatest portrait of life, The Brothers Karamazov, another in its series of books that live the world's great novels. The monastery lay a quarter of a mile outside the town, and beyond it was the hermitage, a lowly two-room cell. This, for many years, had been the home of the great elder, Father Zosima, the holy man to whom so many turned for guidance. On the day that our story begins, a young man wearing the long, dark gown of a novice monk is walking slowly back and forth along the portico outside the hermitage. Preoccupied, he does not hear the click of military boots on the flagstone path. He looks up startled as a tall, dark, uniformed man stops beside him. How do you say? Dimitri. Oh, <laughs> you startled me. Yes, I can see that. But why? You were expecting me, weren't you? This is the day for our great family meeting with your elders, Asima. Yes. Yes, this is the day. <laughs> Come, then. From the look on your face, one would think you'd just seen a miracle. That's just it, brother. I have seen a miracle. Oh, one of your precious elders' little tricks, I suppose. Oh, don't talk like that, Dimitri. If only you could have seen... Brother, there was a peasant woman. She was ill with a fever and delirium. They brought her to Father Zosima this morning. He blessed her and... She was healed completely. Oh, Dimitri, Father Zosima is the greatest, the holiest man alive. Ah, come down to earth, Alexei. Who ever heard of a Karamazov daydreaming over such stuff? Oh, Dimitri, if... Listen, Alexei. There's a favor you can do for me. Meet me later today in the garden in back of Father's house, and I'll tell you all about it. But why in the garden? Why not... In the house? <laughs> I am not welcome there, and I don't want to be. All right, brother. But now there's a favor you can do for me. Oh? Uh, what's that? Will you try not to lose your temper today? I don't want Father Zosima to be offended. I'll do my best. But I can't answer for myself if our dear father starts his lying and ranting as usual. This meeting was father's idea. So you think he's in good faith, eh? You know he's only looking for a chance to play the buffoon and to trap me. If he really wanted this thing settled, he could pay me the money he's cheated me out of without coming to Father Zosima. And to talk it over oh, there. Dimitri, nothing like that in front of Father Zosima, oh, please. All right. Alexei, how did you happened to turn into a monk anyway. I don't know, brother. It seemed to be something I had to do. With so much darkness in the world, this was where I found the light. You're looking for answers, then. Ivan is looking for them, too. But not in your way. Yes, Ivan. It's an odd thing, Dimitri, but I seem to know you so much better. Even though Ivan is my real brother and you're only my half-brother. Thank you for that, Alexei. Because I love you better than anyone in the world. Ah, this is too bad of Ivan and father. Where can they be? What the deuce can be keeping them so long? Seated in a carriage on the way to the monastery, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. The insolent little eyes in the vicious bloated face dark continually from the window to his companion, his third son. Ivan, how much farther is it? Aren't we getting close? We're almost there. Why didn't you start on time? Oh, well, no matter. This monk should be glad to see me. I've just given the monastery a thousand rubles to pray for the souls of my two wives. Good enough for them, huh? You'd yeah. have done better to treat them decently while they were alive, instead of keeping a disorderly house with your, your drinking and your low women. Ivan, you talk like that to me, your poor old father. You're not poor from giving too much to your sons. Why, you never looked at me or Dmitri or Alexei either, from the day we were born. Ivan. And if it hadn't been for Grigory, a, a mere servant... And the relations of sort of our education. What would have happened to us? My son. Oh, you're no father. You're a drunken old fake. Ivan! 
Alexei doesn't abuse me like that. Alexei is a monk. He thinks it's it's not right to pass judgment. Oh, you, with your learning and your atheistic ideas. At least the monks are honest. Some of them. And I'm not honest, I suppose. Well, I know something you'd like to steal. <laughs> You've got your eye on Dimitri's beautiful fiance. Why? And uh, 60,000 rubles. You old liar. Ah. Katerina Ivanovna's an honorable girl, ah. and I'll have none of your filthy talk about her. Inside the hermitage, Father Zosima made a sign for Alexei to stand at his side and for the others to sit down on a row of shabby chairs against the wall. The small, faded room had a look of hard wear, like Father Zosima himself, though his eyes were bright and his lips smiled frequently. Alexei watched his father and was ashamed. His fears were coming true. You are welcome here, gentlemen. Oh, Thank you, sacred elder. You must forgive us for being late. You will forgive us, blessed father. There's nothing to forgive. Oh, you're too kind. I try to be punctual. After all, punctuality is the courtesy of kings, is it not? You're scarcely a king, father. Listen to him. I'm not a king. Don't you think I know that, Ivan? Oh, I'm saying the wrong thing. I always do. But believe me, Your Reverence, I only do it to make people laugh. Great Elder, say you're not annoyed with me. Please don't distress yourself and stop being ashamed. You hear, Ivan? You hear? Father Zosima understands me. Father Zosima, look. I'll even go down on my knees. Tell me how to be good. Tell me how to find eternal light. Get up, Fyodor Pavlovich. This is all sham and pretending. Oh, I can't stand any more of this. Get up off your knees, Father. What right have you to pray? Dimitri, you promised me. I can't help what I promised. This whole thing's a farce. A farce? And whose fault is that? The holy elder, I want justice. My son Dimitri is a robber. You cheated me out of my mother's estate. I owe you nothing. Oh, I know why you want money. I know. Listen, holy father, this robber, my son, he's betrothed to a good, honorable girl, Katerina Ivanovna, and what does he do? I warn you, no more. He runs after the enchantress Grushenka. Yes, she's the one he wants. He wants money to get her. Why, you shameless hypocrite. Yes. This enchantress you speak of, Grushenka. You're jealous of me because you want her for yourself. Oh, oh. Dimitri, this is shameful. It is, Alexei. Oh, why is this man alive? Why is he allowed to defile the earth? Kill me, then. Parricide. Ah, you hear, sacred elder. He wants to kill his own father. God have mercy on you, Karamazov. <laughs> God bring peace to your heart. Dmitri Piedarovich. Let me bow down before you. Oh, Reverend Father, no, you must not do this. I bow down to you, Dimitri, to the suffering in store for you. Lie down here, Father Zasima. Lie down on the bed. Oh. Oh, you are ill. They've made you ill. Oh. You, you must pray for your brother, Dedicsi. There will be sorrow in your house. Forgive, Dimitri, dear father. He... Forgive? I knelt at his feet that he might forgive me, that I cannot bear his suffering for him. Oh, Alexei, the sins of the fathers are visited upon the sons, and I pray, God, they may not touch me. For oh, Dimitri... I, I understand him. He is good, he is honest, but he is passionate, and from his passion comes his torment. But what have he found? He has a black heart, and he says, he will destroy himself. He believes not in man, nor in God, nor in himself, and in that way of life there is death. Go now, my say. Go to your father's house. Let me stay here with you. You are more needed there. And remember, my son, this is not the place for you. When it is God's will to call me, leave the monastery, live in the world, work, 
must work unceasingly and remember my words, for my hours are numbered. No, dear father, no. Do not cry. Rejoice and pray for me. Now go. Be near your brothers, or there will be tragedy in your house. Go, dear son. Alexei's heart was heavy with anxiety as he left the dim cell and came out into the sunlight. He hurried toward the big Karamazov house where Ifan and his father lived alone. As Alexei reached the garden of his father's house, he heard Dmitri calling to him. Alexei, Dmitri, in here, Alexei, in the summer house. Good boy. I thought you'd forgotten to come. I got here as fast as I could. Why are you hiding in here? I am watching for someone. Alexei, I want you to go and see Katerina Ivanovna for me. Katerina Ivanovna? Yes. And tell her I can never see her again. Dmitri, has it anything to do with... with that woman? Glushenka? So you're ashamed to mention her name. And I should be even more ashamed. She's ruined me, Alexei. And yet I can't get away. I don't want to get away. When I was in the regiment, I led a wild life, Alexei. I loved wickedness. And yet, everyone liked me. I was a hero in the little town. They thought I had money. And that was when you met Katerina? She was the colonel's beautiful daughter. The belle of the town. And she wouldn't speak to me. She wouldn't even notice me. And for that, I wanted my revenge. I paid her back, Alexei. I took the pride out of her. I made her come crawling to me for money when her father was sorting his accounts with the government. The inspectors were coming to town. They'd have caught him. She came to me late one afternoon and asked me for the money. She was terribly frightened. I let her stand there, and I looked at her. Then I took out a note for 5,000 rubles. I folded it up very carefully and handed it to her without a word. She turned as white as a sheet, and then she ran away. I started singing for joy. But when were you betrothed? Not right away. She went to Moscow and sent back the money with a letter, saying she loved me and wanted to be my wife. <laughs> and then I did a really stupid thing. I sent Ivan to see her. What was so stupid about that? You don't know that Ivan is in love with her. And how can she love me when she looks at him? But she must love you. She asked you to marry her. She's giving me her life out of gratitude. Don't I know she's a million times better than I am? Ah, I'll drown in the back alley and she'll marry Ivan. Go to her, Alexei. Tell her. What do you want me to say? Say I'm never going to see her again. Tell her I sent her my compliments. But where are you going? To the back alley, little brother. To Grushenka. I can't help it, Alexei. I'm plague-stricken, I tell you. I've given up everything for Grushenka. My honor. Everything. There's more, then? Yes, there's more. Katerina gave me 3,000 rubles to send to her sister in Moscow. And what did I do with the money? I took it, and I drove to the next town with Grushenka. I spent it on a bank. I must beat you here, but I don't care. I'm going to Grushenka. I'm going to marry her if she'll have me. Katerina will forgive you. Ivan and I will give you the money and you can pay her back. And when would I pay you back? Why don't you ask father for 3000 Would he give me money to help me marry Grushenka when he wants her for himself? But he's an old man. <laughs> he's an old satyr. He'd do anything to get her. Why, he's got 3000 rubles in his room right now in a big envelope. And he wrote on it, for my... Angel Grushenka, when she will come to me. How do you know it's there? Shmedyakov told me. He's the only person the old fool trusts. So now father's hoping Grushenka will come for the money. That's why I'm watching her. To keep her away from him. Do you think she'll be here today? I don't know. I'm taking no chances. Shmedyakov's going to let me know if he sees her coming. I'll stop her, I'll say. I've got to. But, but father will see her too. What if he... If there's an if, Alexei, it will be murder. I'll kill him. Brother, what are you saying? 
Oh, I, I don't know. I'm afraid at that moment I may loathe him so much I, I won't be able to endure it. As Alexei and Dmitri sat talking in the summer house, Fyodor Popovich, in his large, old-fashioned drawing room, was finishing his dinner, attended, as always, by the aged Grigory and the dark-faced, contemplative lackey, Smirjakov. He was starting on his brandy and was in great good spirits, so he listened with delight to Grigory telling a story he had heard that day in the village. And this honorable soldier refused to give up his faith. He was tortured by the heathens and died, glorifying the name of the Lord. <laughs> wonderful, Grigory, wonderful. They ought to make a saint out of him. They'd make a lot of money out of his bones. You're huh? making fun of me, Fyodor Pavlovich. Fun? Yes, I'll make fun if I please. <laughs> Look, even Smedikov is grinning. What do you think of it, my Balaam's ass? <laughs> uh, I think he should have given up his faith and saved his life. There's no sin in that. Why isn't it a sin, you rascal? For that you'll go to the devil and roast like a mutton. Well, I've roasted many a mutton in my time. <laughs> Turn about is fair, as they say. Here's the cost. You ought to be with. <laughs> don't, don't scold him, Grigory. Oh, you're in a bad temper. Why don't you go to bed? As you please, Theodor Pavlovich. But I still believe... Never mind what you still believe. Be off with you. Oh, oh, go, rascal. Nothing to do but... Go, go, go. Yeah, he's gone. Now, tell me, Smitikov, you saw my Grzynka. You told her about the present I have for her, the 3,000 rubles, huh? I told her, Fyodor Pavlovich. Huh? She seemed interested. <laughs> She'll come then, will she, my angel? <laughs> when? When will she come? Will it be today? Oh, that I could not say. But I'm quite sure she'll be here. Good boy. You shall have a gold piece. Oh, now, there's Ivan. How am I going to get rid of him if she comes? I won't. He... Where is Ivan, by the way? Ivan Fedorovich is in his room. He's packing his clothes. Packing? Ah, then he'll go. After all, he'll go to Chabashnya to sell my land. <laughs> I'll make more of us. Eight thousand rubles. And Grushenka can come while he's gone. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's perfect. Quiet, I hear him coming. Well, Father, uh, I see you're at the brandy as usual. Oh, a glass or two, Ivan. It uh, does me good. Ivan... Smerdyakov tells me you've been packing, is that right? Smerdyakov talks too much, as always. But you will go. You'll go to Chermashna to sell the land. I haven't said so. I may go to Moscow. Oh. Or I may not go at all. Oh, what have I done to be cursed with such undutiful sons? Don't be cross with him, Father. father. Huh? Leave him alone. Uh, there's my good boy, my Alexei. Come in, boy. Come in, sit down. Oh, oh, you should have been here a while ago, Alexei. We were on your subject. We were talking about a man who saved his soul. Ivan, you know everything. Tell me, is there a God? There is no God. Alexei, is there a God? There is a God. Oh, you two can't agree. Uh, well, Ivan... Is there, is there immortality? No immortality either. Ah, then if there's no immortality, there is no good and no evil, eh? There is no good and no evil, there is nothing. <laughs> brother, brother, how can you talk this way? Let him talk, Alexei. Perhaps he's right, there is nothing. Nothing but liquor and money. <laughs> and women. <laughs> and you've had too much of the liquor. Liquor and money. And women. Ah, especially women. Father, you're drunk. I'm drunk? Uh, I'm drunk. <laughs> women, did I ever tell you? <laughs> did I ever tell you about the idiot girl, Lizaveta Smedjakov? Huh? Father! Smedjakov, you may go. At once, Ivan Fyodorovich. At once. Huh? What's the matter? What did I say? Oh, I didn't know you were so 
stupid. Oh, yes. You, you despise me. Elixir, you must not love Ivan. You're a good boy, Elixir. You're my good boy. What is that? Huh? What's happening? Where is he? Dimitri! Where is Kusanka, you old fool? Dimitri, he'll kill me. Ivan, don't let him get at me. Medyakov, why did you let him in? I tried to keep him out. I tried. He's here somewhere. No. Medyakov, hold me. No. Where is he? Uh, tell uh, me. Tell me. Save me. Save me. Now, how much I'll save you there? <laughs> Madman, you killed him. Serve him right. I haven't killed him. I'll come again and kill him. You can't stop me. Dimitri, will you get out of here? Oh, hell You tell me. Was she here or not? I swear she's not being here. No one expected her. All right. Don't, don't say anything about the money, Alexei. Just go to Katrina. Compliments and farewell. Remember? I, I've got to find Kushenka. Uh, Father. Uh, here. Uh, Pick him up. Did you cough? Nizhikov? Yes, I'm here. What was Dmitri yeah. talking about? What did you tell him? I told him nothing. He came in, but I didn't speak to him. He was lying. Shenka. Oh, stop mumbling, you old lunatic. Smadyakov, get him to bed. Come along with me, Shadow. Come along. <laughs> if I hadn't pulled Dmitri off, well, it wouldn't take too much to do for the old man, would it? Heaven forbid. Why should heaven forbid? Serve them both right. Oh, don't worry. I I won't let him be murdered. Why don't you stay and keep watch with me? I've got to go to Katerina Ivanovna. I've promised Dmitri. Well, that's compliments and farewell. Dmitri has asked you to go and say that he takes his leave of her? Yes, brother. How will this end? Uh, who knows? Dejected in spirit, almost afraid to think of the day's events, Alexei left his father's house and turned toward the high street where Katerina Ivanovna lived. When he was shown into Katerina's drawing room, he saw that he had interrupted visitors, for there were empty teacups on the table. In a moment, Katerina Ivanovna came in. At last you are here, Alexei. I've been praying for you to come all day. Sit down, please. I've come to... I... He sent me. I knew he would. What did he say? He... He told me to give you his compliments and to say he would never come again. His compliments? He used that word? Yes. Then he was excited. He hadn't made up his mind. Well, that, that might be it. Then I can still hate him. But tell me, did he say anything about money? About 3,000 rubles? He said he was a thief. That he'd lost his honor. But that's not true. I'm his friend. Oh, I say, why is he ashamed to be open with me? It's because of that woman, that Grushenka. But I can forgive that. He wants to marry her. He won't. Because she won't marry him. That girl is an angel. Do you know that? You don't believe me, but I'll show you. Grushenka, my angel, come in here. You called me angel, lady. This is a friend, Grushenka. This is Ayakse. I have waited a long time to meet Ayakse. Oh, see, Ayakse, isn't she lovely? I didn't realize that you knew each other. This is the first time we've met. I wanted to know. And when I sent for her, she flew here like an angel and brought us peace and joy. You're too kind to me, dearest young lady. I'm not worthy. Not worthy. Oh, people are so wrong about her. Only think of it. She loved a man five years ago. She sacrificed everything to him and he deserted her. But now he's coming back and your center will be happy again. Oh, angel, give me your hand. Let me kiss it. There, again. You don't understand me, dear lady. I have a willful heart. I fascinated you, Dimitri. Only for fun. But now you'll save him. You gave me your word. You'll go back to that other man. Oh, no, I didn't give my word. I may go back to Dimitri. You see, I'm so changeable. But you said something quite different, huh? I never expected... Ah, oh, young lady, and do you still like me so much? 
Give me your hand. I'll kiss it as you did mine. Why? Why do you only hold my hand like that? You know, perhaps after all, I won't kiss your hand. As you please. But why not? So that you may be left to remember that you kissed my hand, but I didn't kiss yours. Oh. Creature. And I shall tell Dimitri, and how he will laugh. Oh, you, you vile woman, you're a creature for sale. For shame, young lady. For sale, indeed. You visited Dimitri for money. You took money from Dimitri oh, once. He told me. Hey. You, you, I'll kill Come you. Marina, you. Not a word. Oh, oh, let right. me go, Andrei. Let me beat her. <laughs> Dimitri, don't. <laughs> So she wouldn't kiss her hand, eh, I should say? <laughs> oh, that's her all over. Don't <laughs> laugh, Dimitri. It was terrible. That she devil. She was magnificent. But Katharina. Oh, I see. Right through her. She thought she could be witch, Grushenka, did she? But, brother, think how you've insulted Katharina. Grushenka flung it in her face. Ah, you're right, I would say. I am a scoundrel. Come, that's enough. You go your way and I mine. I don't want to see you again. Not see me? No. But, wait a minute. One more confession to you alone. Look at me, little brother. Look at me well. Here. You're on my breast. There's terrible disgrace in store for me. The greatest dishonor of all. What? What is it? Never mind. Only listen. I can stop this disgrace. I can get my honor back tomorrow. Only I'm not going to do it. It's the back alley and the she-devil for me, little brother. And don't pray for me. I'm not worthy. Goodbye, Alex. And Alexei lay that night on his cot in the monastery... Wondering in his heart why Father Zosima had bade him go forth from the peace of that holy place. For in the interweaving lives of his family, of the world outside, there was confusion and darkness in which one lost the way. Brothers Karamazov by Dostoyevsky is one of the world's great novels brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Listen next week to the second episode of The Brothers Karamazov and remember that this and countless other great books are to be had in your local public library. To enhance your enjoyment of these broadcasts, NBC offers you Herbert Gorman's Handbook of the World's Great Novels. Just send 25 cents with your request to World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27. The Brothers Karamazov was adapted for radio by Clarence A. Ross. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and the orchestra directed by Bernard Berkowitz. The entire production was under the direction of Homer Heck. Grushenka was played by Patricia Dunlap, Katharina by Jean Murray, Dostoyevsky by Donald Gallagher, Alex D. by Charles Flynn, Ivan by Larry Alexander, Dmitri by Boris Aplin, Fyodor Pavlovich by Sherman Marx, Father Zosima by Arthur Peterson, Shmertikov by Cliff Norton, and Grigory by Philip Lord. And this is Dave Garraway. The program came to you from Chicago and has been a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated station. The world's the great NBC. novel. <laughs> Thank you.
Tonight, the NBC University of the Air presents the second of four episodes in its dramatization of Fyodor Dostoevsky's masterpiece, The Brothers Karamazov, another in its series of books that live the world's great novels. Alexei Karamazov, the young and gentle novice monk, feels himself powerless to avert the terrible conflict growing in the lives of his brothers, Ivan and Dmitri, and their selfish and vicious old father. He feels the gathering force of tragedy in his family and faces yet another great sorrow in the approaching death of his beloved teacher, the elder of the monastery, Father Dosima. Thus, his loyalty is divided as Dostoevsky takes up the thread of our story. Alexei rose from his cot in the monastery before daybreak. He thought immediately of his brother Dmitri's strange farewell to him the night before, and of the terrible disgrace Dmitri had hinted at and refused to explain. He resolved to look for Dmitri at once and to solve the mystery. But first, he approached a venerable monk, the friend and confidant of Father Zasima. Father Paisi, how is Father Zasima? He is worse, my dear boy. He is very weak. When, Father? How long? When it is God's will. But he may not live through the day. Go to him, Alexei. He needs you. Yes, I will go. Come closer, Alexei. It seems dark. I can see you. Father Zosima. No tears, my dear son. Tell me, are your people expecting you? Do they need you? I promised myself I'd see them today. But now I don't want to leave you. But you must go, Alexei. You shall be here when I die. I will say my last words to you. That will be my last gift to you, because you love me. Go now, my son. Go and keep your promise. Alexei obeyed, happy with the elder's promise that he should hear his last word on earth. He hurried toward his father's house, anxious to finish what he had to do and return quickly. He found the old man sitting alone over his breakfast, the brandy bottle already on the table. What are you doing here, Alexei? I just came to find out how you're feeling. Hmm. Don't trouble yourself. You'd do better to go after your brother Ivan. Why? Where's he gone? Why, to Katerina Ivanovna, of course. He still thinks he's going to get up for himself, his brother's fiancé. He didn't tell you so. He didn't. What do you think he's doing around here? He didn't come to murder me like Dmitri. He doesn't ask for money. He must have come for something. Oh, you're still in a bad mood from yesterday. You'd be in a bad mood, too. Uh, I ought to have that ruffian Dmitri locked up. A man can't beat up his old father. The Lord's got something to say about that. You wouldn't put Dimitri in prison. He's your own son. Ah, wouldn't I? Ah. But, Alexei, if I sent him to prison, Krushenka would feel sorry for him. This way, she'll feel sorry for me because he beat me. <laughs> your father's a clever man, Alexei. <laughs> a very clever man. I'll marry Krushenka. And I'll crush Dmitri. Don't talk like that. I'll crush him. I will, like a beetle. You'll never get Krushenka. And you can go and tell Ivan to leave Katerina alone. Let her look out for Dmitri. Let her keep him away from my Krushenka. Now, get out. Get out. Uh, go to Katerina's and, and find out what's going on. Yes. Uh, oh, Alexei, uh, and come back and tell me. You hear? Goodbye, Father. God be with you. Ah, God be with me indeed. <laughs> I need a drink. That's what I need. Mm. 
Alexei made his way toward Katerina Ivanovna's house with new doubts besetting his mind. Until now, it had seemed impossible to him that Ivan should be in love with Dmitri's betrothed. He wanted to believe that Katerina was truly in love with Dmitri. But now he remembered his brother's words of the day before. She's giving me her life out of gratitude. And as he entered Katerina's drawing room, he looked anxiously into Ivan's pale face, trying to find the answer. I'm just leaving, Alexei. Come along with me. No, Ivan, please. I want to know what Alexei thinks. I want him to tell me I'm right. If I can help you, Katerina. You're my friend, Alexei. And you saw what happened yesterday. When that woman was here. Grushenka, you mean? Yes. I've decided something, Alexei. And Ivan thinks I'm right. Oh, yes. You're right. It, it has to be this way. And I want you to tell me so, too, Alexei. What is it, Katerina? It's only this. If Dmitri marries that woman, I'll never forgive him. But I'll never leave him. I'll watch over him all my life. Uh, Dmitri will appreciate that. He'll be unhappy with her, Ivan. He's uh. sure to be. And then he can come to me. I'll give up my whole life for his happiness. I want him to see me doing it all his life. But you only feel this way for a moment, Katerina. Oh, you don't know her, Alexei. This moment will last all her life. She thinks it's her duty. A duty, I say. That's what will help me bear. Yes, Katerina. You'll spend your life thinking about your own heroism, about how brave you are in your suffering. I say, tell me. I want to know what you'll say. I know you're both my friends. I know you won't desert me. I'm going back to Moscow tomorrow. To Moscow? Why, why how fortunate. I mean... Well, I don't mean I'm glad you're going, such a good friend. I'm sorry to lose you, but you can deliver some letters for me. Yes, that's it, some letters. I'll go and write them right away. And what about Alexei's opinion? I thought you were so anxious to hear it. I haven't forgotten. I want his decision. I'll do whatever he says. You'd better not hear what I've got to say. But what's the matter, Alexei? He's going to Moscow, and you say you're glad. You're playing a part as if this were a theater. What are you talking about? You don't love Dmitri at all. You never have, and Dmitri never loved you. You're torturing Ivan because you love him, and you're torturing yourself trying to believe you love Dmitri. It's got to stop. Why, you... You're a little religious idiot. That's what you are. You're a good boy, Alexei. You made a mistake. What mistake? Katerina's not in love with me. She's kept me around so she could take out a spite on someone. When Dmitri insulted her. Is this what you think of me? You're enjoying all of this, Katerina. It gives you a chance to be faithful and heroic. Ivan, forgive me. I can't. I can't not right now. I've loved you too much. I shouldn't say that. But it doesn't matter because I'm never coming back. Goodbye, Katerina. Be happy with your duty. Ivan! <laughs> Katerina, it was my fault. I began it. Oh, what do I know about these oh, things? No, it was not your fault. Run after him, I say. Tell him. Tell him what? Tell him. No. Only go. Oh, <laughs> what kind of woman am I? Ivan! Wait! Ivan! Alexei! You should have come with me in the first place. Ivan, you shouldn't have left Katerina like that. She's terribly unhappy. Don't worry about her, little brother. She's stronger than you think. Come, walk along with me. Where are you going, Alexei? I have to get back to the monastery soon. Father's are seen as dying. Tell me, have you seen Dmitri today? No. Oh, I, I wanted to see him before I went away. Well, but there's no need for it now. Are you really going so soon, brother? Yes. I finished what I had to do, and I'm going. You saw me finish it just now. At Katerina? Yes. I don't believe you, brother. I don't think you can live with this. Don't you? And I tell you, there's a strength that can stand anything. What strength? The strength 
of being a Karamazov, Alexei. I can always fall back on that. And get to be like father, you mean? Yes, even that. I can make a life for myself, Alexei. Without her, without anybody. For as long as I don't lose my desire for life, everything is lawful. Yes. You said that, yes? <laughs> and you, you don't like me for it, do you? No more about this, Alexei. You go to the right, and I to the left. Now, go to your elder. He's dying. If he dies without you, you'll be angry with me for keeping you. Goodbye, Alexei. It was just the way Dmitri had left Alexei the night before. And the strange resemblance passed through Alexei's mind as he stood looking after his brother. For a moment, he was afraid for Ifan. But the thought left him, and all at once he turned and almost ran to the monastery. And Ifan, when he left Alexei, went home to Fyodor Pavlovich's house. But with every step he took, he felt a more terrible depression growing on him. A depression which he could not explain. Until suddenly, about 15 paces from the gate, he realized what was worrying him. The lackey, Smir Jakov, was sitting on a bench in the gateway waiting for him. And suddenly, Ifan knew that this was the man he hated. Hated for his slyness, his vanity and for the way he seemed to think that he and Ifan had some kind of understanding between them. Smirjakov grinned at him. I am surprised at you, Ivan Fyodorovich. Why are you surprised at me? Why don't you go to Chermasnya, sir? Why should I go to Chermasnya? Why, because Fyodor Pavlovich has begged you to go, so to sell his land for him, sir. Let me pass. I'm in a hurry. Oh, wait a minute, Ivan Fyodorovich. Well? I'm in an awful position, sir. What are you talking about? Why, about your father and your brother, Dmitri. Fyodor Pavlovich worries me every minute about Grushenka. When will she come? Why hasn't she come? And Dmitri Fyodorovich threatens to kill me if I let her get here without knowing. Oh, I'm afraid of them, sir. Then why have you been meddling? Why are you spying for Dmitri anyway? Oh, how could I help it? Dmitri Fyodorovich got a hold of me at the very beginning. Now he'll kill me if I miss her. Well... What are you going to do about it? I don't know, sir. I have a feeling perhaps I'll have a long fit tomorrow. What do you mean, a long fit? My epilepsy, sir. I've had it all my life. Sometimes the fits go on for three days. But how can you tell when you're going to have one? I can't tell. But I might fall down the cellar steps, and that would bring one on. Oh. So you're going to pretend to be ill for three days. If Grushenka should come, Dmitri couldn't blame a sick man for not telling him. Could he, sir? Oh, hang it all. What are you afraid of? Dmitri's not going to kill you. He'd kill me, first of all. But more than that, they might take me for an accomplice if he killed your father. <laughs> Who should take you for an accomplice? Oh, wait. Because of the signals, sir. What signals? Speak out, will you? You've been going to your room early. You don't know how carefully your father locks himself in at night. He's afraid to open the door. But he wants to know if Grushenka comes. So, there are signals. He sent me to tell her about them. Five knocks mean she's here. Three knocks means he must let me in. So, if he heard one of the signals, he'd open the door right away. Without being afraid. And you told Dmitri about this? How dared you tell him? I was afraid of him. I told him so he'd know I'm faithful to him. Then you'd, you'd better watch for him. Make sure he doesn't use those signals. But how can I if I should be laid up with a fit? Oh, let Grigory know then. He'll keep them out. Oh, Grigory will never know. His lumbago has been bothering him. And, and every night his wife gives him a very strong medicine and then drinks the rest of it herself. It puts them right to sleep, and they'd never hear Dimitri. So you'll have a fit and they'll be drunk. It looks to me like you're trying to arrange this whole thing. Oh, how could I arrange it? It all depends on Dimitri, whether he comes. And if Grushenka doesn't come to the old man at all, then why should Dimitri break in? Why, well, he'll come the way he did yesterday, just to make sure she's not here. Ah. And then there's the... 3,000 rubles. You know it's in an envelope in your father's room. And that's nonsense. 
Dmitri might kill father on account of Grushenka, but he won't see you. He needs money, Ivan Fyodorovich. And besides, think of this. If Grushenka marries the old man, there wouldn't be a penny for any of you. But Fyodor Pavlovich hasn't made a will. If he dies now, there'll be 40,000, even for Dmitri. Then why on earth are you telling me to go to Chermashnya? Oh, if I were in your place, I'd get out of here, that's all. You're an idiot, and what's more, you're a scoundrel. Oh. I'm going away to Moscow, if you want to know. And I'm going early tomorrow morning. Uh, well, uh, of course, they could send for you in Moscow if anything happened. Oh, and couldn't they send for me in Chermashnya? It's even closer than Moscow. They could send for you there, too. Then what are you talking about? I only meant, sir, uh, your father has asked you to go to Chemashnya. He's begged you to go. So, he, he'd be bringing it on himself, is that it? Uh, precisely so, sir. Let him think I've gone to Chemashnya, then. I tell you, I'm going to Moscow. And I'm going tomorrow. Yes, sir. I always say, sir, it's worthwhile talking to a clever man. What do you mean by that, you idiot? Oh, nothing, sir. Uh, Fyodor Pavlovich will be waking up soon, if you will excuse me. Ivan sat up very late at night thinking of many things and rose in the morning without saying goodbye to his father and set out on his journey. But instead of relief, his soul was filled with such gloom his heart ached with such anguish as he'd never known before. Meanwhile, as Ivan and Smerdyakov were having their strange conversation, Alexei reached the monastery and went anxiously into Father Zasima's cell. The elder's face was bright and cheerful. He lay in his bed, talking quietly to Father Paisi and the other monks who were his friends. Seeing Alexei, he smiled joyfully and held out his hand. Welcome, my dear Alexei. Oh, dear father, I came as soon as I could. Uh, have you been home? Have you seen your brother Dmitri? I saw him yesterday. I could not find him today. Oh, but you must find him. Perhaps, perhaps you may have time to prevent something terrible. Oh, father and teacher, tell me what... What is this terror? What What is this suffering? Uh, I cannot tell. But I saw a look in his face, and it seemed to reflect his fate. Alexei, Alexei, remember everything, and all our fates are from the Lord. But I can tell you, Alexei, what the Lord decrees for you. You will go forth from these walls, and you will live like a monk in the world. You will have misfortunes, but you will find your happiness in them. You will bless life. And you will make others bless it. Alexei, give me a hand, dearest father. Rejoice, dear son. Rejoice. Pray for me, Alexei. My blessing upon you. Father Zasima. Father Zasima. He is gone, dear son. He's with the Lord. Father, you see, how can this be? What shall I do now? What shall I do? <laughs> the body of Father Zasima was prepared for burial according to the ritual, and he lay in the open coffin with an icon of the Savior in his hand. All night, Alexei knelt beside him and prayed, while Father Paisi stood reading the gospel as it was prescribed. But when it was daylight, the crowds began to gather outside the cell. The monks came first, and then the people from the town. They gathered, waiting, filled with expectation. A miracle. We shall see a miracle. The sick will be healed. The blind will see again. A miracle. A miracle. And Alexei was waiting, too, hoping, fearing, sure of great things to come. Surely God would show his favor to the remains of such a holy man. 
Yet the hours went by and the expected miracle did not come to pass. The crowd grew restless and the mood began to change. It shows God's judgment is not his man. He was not strict in fasting. He was a proud man. He was not humble. And the criticism became an uproar. He was unclean. He was not faithful. He is turned into a devil. It is a sign. It is a sign from God. All at once, Father Paisi saw Alexei leave the side of the coffin with a strange look and slip toward the door of the cell. Alexei, my son, where are you going? I don't know, Father. Where is there left for me to go? What do you mean, my son? Father Paisi, why has there been no miracle? Have you fallen into temptation then? Can you be with those of little faith? Let me go, Father, I pray you. You're leaving the hermitage without asking leave, without asking a blessing. Go then, Alexei, but you will come back again. Alexei had spoken the truth. He did not know where he was going. He knew only that the man he had exalted above everything in the world had not received the glory that was his due. Who had judged him? Who had decreed this? And there was a terrible doubt in Alexei's heart. For if his faith was gone, what was there left for him? And then he remembered Ivan's words the day before. The strength of being a Karamazov to sink into baseness and corruption. Krushenka lived in the busiest part of the town near the cathedral square. It was quite dark when Alexei reached her room. Yes? Yes, who is it? It is Alexei Karamazov. Sanya, Sanya, who's there? Don't tell me. It's not he, mistress. It's someone else. It's I, Krushenka. It's Alexei. Alexei, hey, you frightened me. But I'm so glad to see you. Come in, come in. I've always hoped you'd come to see me, Alexei. Only I'm expecting some news, and I was afraid it was Dmitri breaking in. But why are you so afraid of Dmitri? I tell you, I'm expecting news. I don't want him here at all. But you, Alexei, it's different with you. Sit here by me. Sit on the sofa. That's right. Why do you look so sad, Alexei? What? I don't know. I have nothing to be sad about. No, of course not. I'll cheer you up, Alexei. Here, let me sit on your knee. You're not afraid of me, are you? No, I'm not afraid. Of course not. And now, shall I tell you my secret about the message? Tell me, if you like. My officer is coming, Alexei. The man I haven't seen for five years. He's at McRoya. He'll send a messenger for me. I'm expecting the messenger any minute. At McRoya? Why, that was where... Where... Where I went with Dimitri once. Does Dimitri know about this? Of course he doesn't. That's why I'm so afraid. But don't remind me of him. I want to think about you. Senor, go get some champagne. I want to celebrate because Alexei's here. At once, <laughs> mistress. What a lot of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> why did you come, Alexei? What made you come? I... I don't know. Only that Father Zosima died last night. What? And And I didn't know. I've been sitting on your knee at a time like this. And you had such a terrible sorrow. You know my sorrow? You can understand it? Oh, I pity you, I would say. Heaven rest his soul. He was a good man. He was a saint. You say that? Then you saved me, Grushenka. Saved you? But how? I came here thinking to find a wicked soul. I came because I thought I'd lost my faith, because I felt drawn to evil. And instead, you have pity. I say, I shall make me ashamed. I'm 
bad, Alice. They are not good. I wanted to get you here. I wanted to ruin you because you despised me. But I've never despised you. But you ought to. You ought to. Listen, Alice, to me. Five years ago, when I first began to live this way, I used to lie awake at night remembering that man, my officer. And I used to say, I'll pay him back. I'll pay him back. And then I grew hard, I grew wise, I turned into this. But now he's coming back. But it isn't the same. I'm not the same. Only when I first heard from him, it, it took my breath away. I thought, if he comes out, crawl back to him like a beaten dog. And now you know the truth. Now you can judge me. I judge you? What am I beside you? Five years of torment and you can still forgive. You know more about love than I do. There's a treasure in your soul. I have to say, you're the only man who's ever pitied me. I knew someday someone like you would come. Mistress, Mistress Darling... Then you, what is it? The messenger has come with a carriage and three horses. And the letter, mistress, here's the letter. <laughs> Give it to me. He has sent for me. He whistles. Crawl back, little dog. Goodbye, Alexei. It's five years of my life I've got to go. Alexei, one thing more. What is it, dear sister? Give my greetings to Dimitri. Tell him Grushenka loved him for one hour. Let him remember that hour all his life. Now go, Alexei. Grushenka is flying to a new life. What's to her? Alexei went out alone into the dark, rejoicing in the pity and the goodness of this woman he had thought so evil. He returned to the cell in the monastery, fell on his knees beside the coffin, and poured out his thankfulness. Thank you, dearest father. Thank you for the miracle of love. And he rose and went down the steps into the open, his faith overflowing in his heart. The faith which was now to be his for all his life. He fell down on the earth and embraced it. And it seemed to him that the mystery of earth was one with the mystery of the stars. Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky is one of the world's great novels, brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Listen next week to the third episode of the Brothers Karamazov. To enhance your enjoyment of these broadcasts, NBC offers you Herbert Gorman's Handbook of the World's Great Novels. Just send 25 cents with your request to World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27. Brothers Karamazov is adapted for radio by Clarice A. Ross. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom, and the orchestra was directed by Bernard Berkman. The entire production was under the direction of Homer Heck. Dostoyevsky was played by Donald Gallagher, Grushenka by Patty Dunlap, Katerina by Jean Maury, Fenya by Alma Platt, Alexei by Charles Flynn, Ivan by Larry Alexander, Fyodor Pavlovich by Sherman Marks, Merjakov by Cliff Norton, Father Zostima by Arthur Peterson and Father Paisi by Burr Lee. This is David Garraway. This program came to you from Chicago and has been a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated station. The this world's is NBC great novel. <laughs>
The Brothers Karamazov, another in its series of books that live the world's great novel. And so the tale of the three brothers continues. We have seen Ivan Karamazov flee from his father's house to Moscow in an effort to free himself from the family conflicts. Alexei, the youngest, sleeps soundly tonight in his cot at the monastery. He has found strength and a renewal of his faith, aided by Grushenka, the woman desired both by his father and his eldest brother, Dmitri. Now Grushenka has departed for the town of Makroya to meet her former lover, a man she has not seen in five years. But this fact is not known, either by the evil old father, Fyodor Pavlovich, nor by the wild and passionate Dmitri, whose jealousy of his own father is driving him to his doom. At the very moment when Grushenka, flying to a new life, called her last farewell to Alexei, Fyodor Pavlovich in his lonely house was waiting eagerly for her arrival. The lackey, Smirjakov, had assured him that morning that she had promised to come without fail. But the day had been full of annoyances, and he was in a disagreeable temper as the old servant Grigory served him his dinner. Grigory! What the devil is the matter with this fowl? It's so dried up I can hardly chew it. <coughs> Give me a drink of brandy. Yes, Fyodor Pavlovich. Uh... Uh, now that Ivan's taken himself off, there's only me to cook for. I should think a man could have a decent meal. My wife wasn't trained as a cook, Fyodor Pavlovich. Smirjakov has done all the cooking for so long. Yes, yes, confound him. Has the doctor been here? Yes. Well, what does he say? He says one can never tell with epilepsy. It's a very violent fit. It may go on for a long time. Oh, what good does that do me? I could have told him that. So, give me that plate of fruit, will you? Yes, sir. <coughs> oh. Confound you! What are you so clumsy for? I'm sorry, Theodore Pavlovich. It's my lumbago. I, I can hardly stand. Fine servants. One falls in a fit, the other's a cripple. Oh, get to bed. Get to bed. I don't want you stumbling around. Uh, yes, Theodore Pavlovich. Do you want anything more? No, no, we offer you. Oh, and mind, mind you lock the garden gate. No telling what that ruffian Dimitri will do. Yes, Fyodor Pavlovich. Oh, good riddance. Now, there's no one in the house. That's good. No one to bother my angel Grushenka when she comes. All the doors locked, but this one... Safe and sound. Now I've got to listen for the signal. Five knocks on the window. That'll mean she's here. I don't want to miss the signal if she comes. If she comes? <laughs> when she comes. <laughs> Dmitri Fyodorovich said afterwards that he had spent this time in a state of mind close to madness. It seemed to him that his final conflict with his father was close upon him and had to be decided before anything else. But beyond that, he dreamed of the time when he would marry Grushenka, would carry her far away to a place where they could begin a new, a virtuous life. But for this new life, he needed money. And there was the terrible weight on his conscience of the money he had stolen from Katerina Ivanovna. I've been a scoundrel to one woman. I'm a common pickpocket. Grushenka won't want to spend her life with a thief. I've got to pay my debt to Katerina. I've got to. And he made up his mind that before all else, the 3,000 rubles must be returned to Katerina Ivanovna. Where was he to get the money? Where? In his confusion, he tried every means to find it. His landlord, who was used to his strange requests. Samsonov, have you any money in the house? Three rubles? 
Give it to me quickly. And a young official he had met in a tavern, a man fond of collecting weapons. Shorter Elliot's pair, Hawkins. These dueling pistols. They are my most prized possession. I won't sell them to you, but what will you lend me for them? Ten rubles? Very well. Thus it was known and remembered that early in the evening of which we speak, Dmitri Fyodorovich had not a farthing in the world. But in all those two days, he had seen nothing of Grushenka. And all at once, the terrible thought struck him. What has she been doing? My father is waiting for her with 3,000 rubles. What if she has gone with him? Grushenka had not been on her way to Makroya a quarter of an hour, and Fenya, her maid, was sitting in the kitchen. <gasps> Dmitri Fyodorovich! Oh, heaven help me! Fenya, where is your mistress? Where is she? I, I don't know, sir. You may kill me, but I can't tell you. You're lying. I know you're lying. I'll find her. Please, Dmitri Fyodorovich, please! Get out of my way! But as Dmitri is rushing for the door, something catches his eye. A pounding mortar stands on the table, and in it a small brass pestle. And reaching out his hand, Dmitri slips the pestle into his pocket. <laughs> Climbing the garden fence in back of his father's house, Dmitri can see the lighted window. There's a light in the old man's room. She's there. <laughs> he stands, listening. There's not a sound, not a breath of wind. Didn't hear me jump over the fence. Slowly he creeps forward, reaches the bushes outside the window. There he is. But where is she? He watches Fyodor Pavlovich pacing the room up and down. He's alone. She must not be there. But I've got to know. I've got to know. Is it you? Where are you, my angel? Where are you? Dimitri watches him, not moving. Where are you, my angel? Oh, I've got a present for you. Yes, 3,000 rubles, the money that is mine. This is the moment of loathing that Dimitri has feared. Furious anger rises in his heart. Suddenly his hand goes to his pocket. His fingers close around the brass pestle. But a moment later, he turns and plunges headlong through the garden, fleeing from the impulse to kill. It is at this very moment that the old servant, Grigory, sleeping in the lodge, wakens on his bed of sickness. Oh, my back. My back. Uh, there's something I, I've forgotten. Something. I forgot to lock the garden gate. Coming down the steps of the lodge, he notices an unusual thing. Why is the master's window open? It isn't summer now. And then, 40 paces away in the garden, the shadow of a man, a shadow moving very fast. Get away from here. I've got to get away. Who's there? Stop! Stop, I tell you! And just as Dimitri reaches the fence... So, it's you. I've got oh. you. I've got you, parasite! Oh, what have I done? His head. There's blood. I killed him. And there lay Grigory. And two paces away, in the middle of the path, a small brass pestle covered with blood. But Dmitri was running like a madman through the night. <laughs> Don't hurt me. You'll talk or I'll kill you. Where is she, Fenya? Where is she? I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. She's gone to McCroy, to her officer. What officer? Confound you. What officer? The same one she used to know five years ago. What? He came back. He sent for her. She's gone to him. Gone? Gone? What is that? Your hands. Look at your hands. Huh? Oh, it's, it's blood, Fenya. It's blood. And why was it spilled? Ah, but it doesn't matter. 
I won't stand in her way. Only till dawn. Tomorrow, Dimitri will step aside. Piotr Ilyich, thank heaven I found you at home. I was just on my way. Good heavens, Dimitri, what's the matter? You're covered with blood. The pistols I pawned with you today. Give them to me quickly. I, I've brought you the money. Money? I should think you have. What a fistful of banknotes. But look at yourself. What's wrong with you? Here, I'll pour you some water. Wash that blood off. Yes. Uh, but first, give me the pistols. I need them. Here, here's your money. A hundred rubles? I haven't got change. Haven't you got anything smaller? Uh, I don't know. I, I think they're all alike. I'll send my servant to the shop next door to Plotnikov's. They'll change it. Uh, Omnisha, come in here. To the shop? To Plotnikov's? Yes, that's it. Oh, Omnisha, uh, look here. Uh, take this money. Take 300 rubles and 300? go to... 300? Why are you giving him so much? Uh, no matter. Uh, take the money, Misha. Run to the shop. Tell them to load up a carriage with things to take to Macroya. They'll know all about it. I did this once before. Uh, tell them four dozen bottles of champagne. Good and pastries, heavens. meat, caviar, candy, 300 rubles worth. The same as before. They know what I had before. All right, Misha. You heard him. Be off with you. I hope he understood you, Dimitri. He was busy staring at that blood. Come uh, on, you've got to wash it off. Uh, yes. All right. What have you been up to? Whom have you been beating? It's nothing, nothing. Uh, I haven't time to tell you. Give me the pistols. Oh, where's my money? You put it in your pocket. Oh. Where did you get all that money? Ah. Uh, Here. Here's the pistol. I haven't opened the case since you left. What are you doing? Loading the pistol? Yes, I'm loading it. Why are you looking at the bullet like that? Listen, Piotr Ilyich. If you were going to put that bullet in your brain, couldn't you look at it first? What are you talking about? <laughs> Nothing. Just foolishness. Uh, come on, let's go. I want to start for McCroyer. What are you going to McCroyer for in the middle of the night? There's a woman. I was there with her once before. Come on, let's go. Well, they've got the carriage all loaded up with the things you ordered. Yes, I've got to be off. The driver's ready. Oh, listen, Dimitri. What was that nonsense about the bullet? Don't worry, Piotr Ilyich. I was fooling about the bullet. Uh, I've got to get in now. Dimitri Fyodorovich! Huh? Wait, 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 please. Why, it's Grushenka's maid. Fenya, what are you doing here? Please, Dmitri Fyodorovich, don't harm my mistress. What is this? Don't harm her, Dmitri Fyodorovich. And don't murder him. He's going to marry her. That's why he came back. So that's it. You're going to make trouble, Dmitri? Listen, give me back those pistols. Do you hear? Please, Dmitri Fyodorovich. Oh, don't worry, Fenya. I won't hurt anyone. Got to leave now. I've got to hurry. Goodbye, Sir Horton. Fly along, driver. Full speed! Confound it, there's something going on here. Where's that girl? Ah, she's run off. Those pistols. Oh, let them do what they like. None of my business. But his face, covered with blood. And he wouldn't say where he got that money. I'm going to look into this. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! Yes? What do you want? Dmitry Fyodorovich, your honor. <laughs> Pleasure to see you yes. again. Uh, where's Grushenka? Is she here? She's here, Dmitry Fyodorovich. She's in the next room with a stranger, an official Polish gentleman. Mozolovich's name is. Listen, you remember when I was here before how I sent the money flying? Uh, I remember well. You must have left 3,000 rubles behind yes, you. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I I've come to do the same thing again. Unload the cart. The champagne, everything. And send for the gypsies. Wake up the whole village. I want a feast, you hear? At once, Dmitry Fyodorovich. Come on, driver. Lend a hand here. No. Dmitry, what are you doing here? Who is this man? 
Don't be afraid, Mishenka. I'm all right. Nothing's the matter. But, sir, I must ask you, may I stay here tonight, here in this room, only till morning? Sir, I do not know you. But Karamazov. Are... Dmitri Karamazov. We are here in private, Karamazov. There are other rooms. But you must let me stay. It's my last night. My last hour. I've brought wine and money, lots of money. I want to have music and singing. Only one night. If my lady is permitting. Of course. Dimitri, sit down. What are you talking about? Don't frighten us. Me frighten you? Why should I want to frighten you? I have nothing to do with you anymore. Wine! Wine! Let's have some wine! Oh, I'm glad you've come. I want you to stay. What my queen commands is law. Karamazov, I beg you to join us. Let us drink, then. Innkeeper, where is the champagne? I'm coming, Dmitri Fyodorovich. Here's the wine I've brought in. Oh, no, more bottles, more champagne. <laughs> Quickly, do you hear? At once, Dmitri Fyodorovich. <laughs> Let's drink. I drink to your country, Mushalovich. To Poland. We drink to Poland. <laughs> and now, let us drink to Russia. To Russia and we shall be brothers. What is this, Mishalovich? You do not drink. I will not drink to Russia. Huh? Russia is the enemy of my country. You are a fool, Mishalovich. I am not a fool. Then why don't you drink? A man loves his own country. Stop quarreling. I won't have it. Stop it, I tell you. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to start a quarrel. You didn't start. It was he. It was not a good idea to drink it. And are we simply to sit here now and look at each other? Oh, no, no. That isn't what I want. What shall we do? You mentioned you had money, Karamazov. Perhaps a game of cards. Cards? Why, that's a wonderful idea. We'll play cards. Of course, it is very late. It's always late with you. Why are you so dull? Why are you so gloomy? I am only gloomy when you're angry with me. Are you ready, Karamazov? Yes, sit at the table. Yes. Well, here is my money. I want to lose a lot to you. Would you care to use your own card? <laughs> no, 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 no. Take your card. As you wish. <laughs> uh, how much is the bank? Oh, a hundred rubles, two hundred, as much as you want. Two hundred, then. Here. I stake ten rubles on the knave. The knave is prompt. Double the stakes. The queen of hearts. The queen is also trump. <laughs> Double again on the seven. Stop, Dimitri. You lose again, Karamazov. All right, all right. Double again. You have lost 200 rubles, Karamazov. Will you stake any more? 200 already? Well, here then. Another 200. Stop it. That's enough. But what's the matter? I won't let you go on. I won't let you do it. Are you joking, my lady? You're cheating. I saw you do it. I saw you change a card. So that's it. You come to that. You're nothing but a cheat. You dare to insult my honor? Your honor. You have no honor. Dimitri, make him give him back your money. Make him give it back. This is unthinkable. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Never mind the 200. What? Miss Jolovitz, listen. You want money. I'll give you money, lots of it. What is this, Dmitri? Three thousand, Yushalovich. Take it and go your way. Three thousand, you say? Seven hundred down and I'll get the rest. On my honor, I'll get it. Take it and go to the devil. This minute and forever. You're offering him money for me? How dare you? Am I for sale? But look at him. He'll take it. He wants it. Only he wants the whole thing at once. And more, too. Oh, Mushalovich. Perhaps you heard I had money. Is that why you came here to marry me? I came here to forget the past. I came to forgive you. You came to forgive me? But now when I see this man, this...
Karamazov, your lover. That's a lie. She's a good woman. It's not as you say. I came here to make you my wife. But you're not the same. You're a shameless woman. Get out, then. Go back where you came from. Do you mean this? I've been such a fool. I've been miserable for five years and for this. You weren't like this at all. Five years I've been crying like a fool, like a shameless fool. Shameless, yes. Shameless and common. Will you get out? Or do I have to throw you out? I'm going. Rushenka, you can come with me if you want to. If not, goodbye. Get out! Get out! <gasps> to meet. What have I done? Grushenka, listen. The gypsies are here. The feast is ready. Call them in. Bring some wine. I want to drink. I want to get drunk and dance. Do you remember to me, see, the way we did before? So the bargain now are simply your lips and Dimitri, come and sit beside me. How did you happen to come here? Did you really want to give me up to him? I I didn't want to spoil your happiness. But how did you hear about me? Who told you to come here? I will tell you, Grishenka. This is how it was. Hide, hide, a trifle and you meant to shoot yourself. Oh, how silly you are. So you'd go to any length for me? I'd do anything for you, Grishenka. I'll have something to say to you later. Not now. Go and amuse yourself. Oh, tell me now. No, later. I don't want to now. Why are you sad? I, I can see you're sad. Tell me why. It's nothing. Only I left a man ill back there. I'd give ten years of life to know if he's all right. Well, never mind him. You know what I have to tell you? My darling, don't you know who I love? Oh, my darling. You came here tonight and suddenly everything was bright. And my heart said, that's the man you love. But you were afraid, you were afraid of me. How could I think I loved anyone but you? Dimitri, will you forgive me? Do you love me? Oh, Kushinka, my own. <gasps> Go along, then. I want to drink. I want to dance with the gypsies. Whatever happens now, for this one minute, I'd give the whole world. And the captain came from Rostov. And the handsome little corporal came from the town of Ireland. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I can't dance anymore. I'm weak. I can't. Dimitri, yes. take me out of here. Take me away. Of course, my darling. Here, let me carry you. <laughs> Lie down here, my darling. Lie still and rest. Mm -hmm. Darling. Don't touch me, please. Let us be good. Let us be honest. <laughs> Take me away. Take me far away. Yes. Yes, I'll take you. We'll fly away. Yes, darling. When shall it be? When? Right away. Soon. Oh, if I only knew about that blood. What blood? Nothing. Darling, you want to be honest. But I'm a thief. I've stolen money from Katerina. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. Take it from me. Pay her back. What does money matter? You give it back to her and love me. Don't love her anymore. I do love you. I love only you. I love you in Siberia. Why, Siberia? Never mind Siberia, if you like. I don't care as long as I'm close to you. Here he is. Huh? What is this? Will you come here to us, please? Who are these men? This is the captain of police. I am the deputy prosecutor. Nikolish Kirillovich Makarov. 
The old man. The old man in his blood. I understand. Then you admit the crime? I admit it. Punish me. Decide my fate. You will have to come along with us. I'll come. But tell me. How did you find out so soon? It was the devil's work that you came here so soon. As to that, the other Iliad Pierre Houghton informed us how you came to him. Covered with blood. Oh. We found the old man lying where you left him. His head battered in. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was so. I I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, Gregory, Gregory. You speak of the old servant? He's alive. Huh? In spite of your blows, he's recovered. He's alive? I didn't kill him? Oh, Lord, I thank you for the miracle. Indeed, it was he who told us how he caught you running from the open door of the house. House? Door? What door? And how stupid you were going to Pierre Houghton with the old man's money in your fist. The old man's money? What nightmare is this? What are you talking about? Come, come now. You admitted the crime. But what crime? You have said Grigory lives. Enough of this. Ex-Lieutenant Dmitry Fyodorovich Karamazov, it is my duty to inform you that you are charged with the murder of your father, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Brothers Karamazov by Dostoyevsky is one of the world's great novels brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Listen next week to the final episode of the Brothers Karamazov and remember that this and countless other great books are to be had in your local public library. To enhance your enjoyment of these broadcasts, NBC offers you Herbert Gorman's Handbook of the World's Great Novels. Just send 25 cents with your request to World's Great Novels Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27. The Brothers Karamazov was adapted for radio by Clarice A. Ross. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and the orchestra directed by Bernard Berkwitz. The entire production was under the direction of Homer Heck. Dostoevsky is played by Donald Gallagher. Grushenka by Patricia Dunlap. Fenya by Alma Platt. The Gypsy Singer by Carolyn Gilbert. Dimitri by Boris Aplon. Fyodor Pavlovich by Sherman Marks. Grigory by Philip Lord. Pierre Houghton by Everett Clark. Musyalovich by George Kluge. Kirillovich by Ken Nordine. And The Innkeeper by Fred Smith. This is Dave Garraway. The program came to you from Chicago and was a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations. A soldier will take shelter in a tent, a foxhole, or a cellar during a war. He has to. But as a private citizen and a veteran... He needs a decent place to live for himself and his family. Right now, our veterans are finding it next to impossible to locate such a place. And it will be a long time before emergency housing measures take care of the situation. But you can help him. You can help him by sharing your home, remodeling unused space into apartments, listing vacancies at the local veterans' housing center, and by not discriminating against children. If you can help to house a veteran... Do it today. This is no time for sympathy. This situation demands action. This is NBC, the National Broadcast.